we want to analyze this truss using the method of joints. The process of solving the problem can be summarized in eight steps. 1. Replace the inclined load with its X and Y components. 2. Calculate the support reactions. 3. Using joint D, determine the force in members AD and DE. 4. Calculate the force in members AE and AB using the equilibrium equations for joint A. 5. Using joint E, determine the force in members BE and EF. 6. Determine the force in members BC and BF, using joint B. 7. Using joint F, calculate the force in members CF and FG. 8. Calculate the force in member CG using joint G. Determining the X and Y components of the inclined force, which has a magnitude of 15 kN, is straightforward. To calculate the support reactions, we begin by sketching the complete free body diagram of the truss. There are three support reactions, two forces in the X direction and one force in the Y direction. Since the axis directions in the coordinate system can be chosen arbitrarily, I will consider these directions as positive when formulating the equilibrium equations. We need to write three equations. The forces acting in the x direction. The forces acting in the y direction. And the moments around the z-axis all have to sum up to zero. For the moment equation, I use d as the reference point. Needless to say, I could have used any other reference point for writing the moment equation. Three forces create a moment at point D. Cx. Gy. And the 40 kN load. The moment arm for Cx is 4 meters. Since Cx causes a clockwise moment at D, we have positive 4 times Cx here. Gy has a moment arm of 16 meters. This force creates a counterclockwise moment at D, so we get negative 16 times GY here. And, with a moment arm of 8 meters, the applied load of 40 kN results in a clockwise moment at point D, therefore, we write positive 8 times 40 here. Solving these three equations for the unknown forces, we get. Let's revise the truss's free body diagram to include the magnitudes of the support reaction forces. This is a good time to determine the angle that the inclined members of the truss make with the horizontal axis. The angle is 45 degrees. We can now apply the equilibrium equations to the joints of the truss. Here is the free body diagram of joint D. There are two unknown forces at this joint, the force in member AD and the force in member DE. The joint equilibrium equations are Solving these equations for the unknown forces, we get The sign associated with each force reveals if the member is experiencing tension or compression. A positive sign signifies that the member is under tension, while a negative sign indicates that the member is in compression. Therefore, both members AD and DE are in compression. The magnitude of the compressive force is 10.61 kN. Next, we examine joint A. Three member forces intersect at the joint. We have already identified one of these forces, leaving two unknown member forces. We can find these remaining forces by applying the equilibrium equations to the joint. So, member AB carries a compressive force of 20.61 kN, and member AE has a tensile force of 29.15 kN. Next, we examine joint E. As you can see, four member forces are acting at this joint, but only two of them are unknown. We can determine the unknown forces using the joint equilibrium equations. Next, we examine joint B. Two unknown member forces are present at this joint. Here are the joint equilibrium equations. Solving these equations for the unknowns, we get Next, we move to joint F. Using the free body diagram of the joint, we can write the following equilibrium equations. 
Calculating the unknown forces, we arrive at the following solutions for the equations. Finally, we consider joint G. At this point, only one unknown force remains, the force in member CG, which can be determined using this equilibrium equation. FCG equals 60.61 kN. To summarize the findings, we can annotate each member with its corresponding calculated force magnitude. Alternatively, next to each force magnitude, we can write the letter C to indicate compression or the letter T to signify tension.